at the model I showed today. When people unload it, very often their assessment observe their mood. If according to them, people are a bit nervous, they receive towers, pieces of soap, and later they were delousing disinfection. Misled them. They are taken to the entrance to the undressing room. The undressing room was special prepared with benches, with the hooks. People had to undress, they asked them to remember the numbers of hooks or to tie up their shoes. Later, when people are naked, they are doing to the smaller chamber in front of you, measured 210 square meters, capacity sometimes for 2,000 people. Resuming a shower, the shower heads were fitted to the ceiling, but they are never connected to the water supplies. Five years ago, our museum archaeologist found the last shower head in the ruins of number two, five years ago, which is very important proof of the crime, and the ruins <coughs> of the crematorium. In the crematorium number two, Joseph Mengele prepared a very modern room for carrying out post-mortem. And in, in, in one of the first transport arrived Jew from Hungary, Miklos Nisli, who was a doctor. He was educated in Breslau. And uh, in, in, he was familiar with forensic medicine because Mengele prepared a very modern room for carrying out post-mortem. Miklos Nisli was chosen by him to the right side. Later he examined him. It's ironic because Miklos Nisli, Hungarian Jew, a doctor, later trained the SS doctors. And he was taken to live in this place, in the, in the crematorium too. Uh, over half a year, he was one of those on the commando. He had special pass, he visited number three, four, and five. And the prisoner survived, and that's why he wrote the book entitled I was Dr. Mengele's assistant. The book testimonies. He described the life of the commando, he was one of them. And he, Joseph Mengele, and very often his pseudo-medical experiments. Uh, as I told you, one of the gas chambers of crematorium number four is destroyed by Jason the Commando. There are no volunteers and no collaborators. They are chosen by accident. Shlomo Venezia, he was 21 years old. His elder brother, his friend, two cousins, Gabai, was taken to the right side. They are registered, they are tattooed. Only in Auschwitz the prisoners were tattooed. And they are taken to the quarantine. One of the camps. It was a kind of preparation for their future life. They had to learn their numbers in German, and they had to learn German songs. They didn't do work, but they received only 1,000 calories per day. As Shlomo said, he was 200, 21 years old man. But one day, when three weeks passed, the officer came in for 80 strong, healthy people. But at first, he asked them what kind of job they're able to do. Shlomo told him that he was a barber. He knew how to cut hair, because when he was a teenager, his father was the co-owner of the barbershop in Saloniki. But his friend, who worked in the bank, told the assessment that he was a dentist. Eight, 80 strong, healthy prisoners. All of them were taken to live in isolation, the camp for the men. But later, when Jews from Hungary started they arriving, 900 Zonder commandos live and work in the crematoria in the gas chambers. Shlomo Venetia worked in number three. But very often they met friends or relatives. He arrived with his mother and younger, younger sisters. Mother was a widow. Later he knew that mother and his sisters were killed in the gas chamber. Maybe because she was strong enough, maybe when she wasn't with, without the girls, yes, well, maybe. And one day, because very often they met friends or relatives, one day among people taken to the undressing room, Shlomo Venetia recognized his uncle. He was skinny, unfit for work. He also recognized Shlomo and he asked him for help. But Shlomo knew the truth and he gave him last piece of bread and later he prayed Kaddish after his death. Uh, 900 Zonder commandos live and walk in the crematoria. The prisoners knew that they'd be probably killed because the last trains which just arrived just were also registered. And in September 44, one day 200 of Zonder commandos were taken from this place. The SSN promised them that they'd be taken to Upper Silesia to live in one of 40 Afghans, but they only take it to Auschwitz one, they gave them vodka, but later the prisoners were killed by means of Cyclone B. But what to do with their bodies? The crematorium number one didn't work, because it was converted into the shelter for the SS men from the hospital. The bodies of killed people were taken to this place. It was signed that they'd be next. That's why, as I told you, four girls, Polish Jewish girls, working in the factory, helped them. They prepared very primitive explosives, on 7th of October 44, the Zonder commando destroyed the crematorium 4. They escaped from number 2, the prison joined them. They are hidden in a barn near Auschwitz 1. But the Germans set fire to the barn after the fire, after interrogation, 
425 prisoners under Commander Joaquin Odal, three SS men were killed, 11 were wounded. But it was the only armed rebellion organized in Auschwitz. Among the prisoners who were killed, died, was Polish Jew Zauman Gradowski. He wrote a diary. And in Yiddish, the part of the diary was found, the part no. And in his diary, in the first page, he wrote, Dear readers, check every piece of ground to find the evidence. Also, his diary, it was the evidence, yes, that's why. Maybe in the future, the part of the next part of diary be, be found, yes. And it was autumn 44, the Red Army was near, and the camp authorities decided not to be number four. Moreover, uh, the Germans decided to dismantle the crematoria, and all useful metal parts were taken to Mauthausen, Grosser's and concentration camps. They also ordered to drill holes for dynamite, but two, three, and five were blew up in the last days before the liberation. This one in a week. Uh, before, uh, no, number five in a day. 27th of Janu January 45, the day of liberation, but nine days earlier, the last roll call appeal was organized. 58,000 prisoners, 58,000 people are divided in two groups. One group went on foot to Gliwice, 80 kilometers far, the other group to Wodzisław, 60 kilometers far. We still have in the uh, villages, in the cemeteries, the graves, because people are killed, died, yes, and the villagers, yes, so um, buried the, the bodies of killed, died people in the graves, and we have also the small memorials in, in the villages. Later, in ruthless train, they are taken to Austria, to Germany, to the concentration camps. For them, the new ones, they had to organize the new life according to the new rules. Because 15,000 of the prisoners were killed or died after the, the marches were called the death marches. Only 7,000 secret adult prisoners were left and 600 children. They are liberated by the Soviets. Three hospitals were organized for them, the Red Cross, the Red Army, and the Polish. The reports prepared by the Red Army doctors were very important because later they used them as the evidence during the Nuremberg trial. The gas chambers were destroyed before the liberation, but easy to see that they're not artificial ruins, yes, but the true ruins, which are still very important evidence of the crime. And how to deny in between the undressing room, the undressing room, the gas chamber, the crematorium. The undressing room, as we have a very cute building, a special design with the basement, the gas chamber and the undressing room in the basement, that's why the special lift was prepared to help to transport bodies to the crematorium. Yes?